In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can utilize the named boundaries to create quantities that are separated out by station range, as well as how we can use these named boundaries for construction, phasing, and sequencing. So I'm going to go open a different file now. So I'm going to go to File Open. We're going to go into the named boundaries for London Road. And what we want to do is we want to create some named boundaries at 100 foot intervals along our corridor, 200 feet to the left and 200 feet to the right. And the purpose of this is so that we can get quantities within inside of each named boundary for reporting purposes. Okay, so I'm inside of my drawing here and I have my terrain, my geometry, and my corridor attached. These are all reference files. Let's go review those real quick. So I'm going to go up to my references. You can see here I have my corridors and all my associated drawings that I need on my project. I'm going to close that. Now what we want to do is we want to create some named boundaries every 100 feet along our alignment and 200 feet to the left and 200 feet to the right. Now named boundaries will allow us to extract the quantities within inside of each named boundary shape. So that's why we want to do this. Okay, so when I come over here to my named boundary tool, I'm going to select place named boundary. It's going to bring up the place named boundary simple plan dialog and we want to make sure we're on the civil plan button here. So we want to come over here and we want to select ANSI D as our drawing seed and that's going to set up some default settings here for us. For our name we want to type in London Road. So I'm going to type in London Road here. Then down at the bottom portion of the dialog we want to do every hundred feet is going to be our length or our interval along the corridor. We also want to specify 200 feet to the left and 200 feet to the right. And then what we want to do is if you notice down in the lower left hand corner of the software you'll see it says identify path element. So it's looking for an alignment to create these shapes along or to create these name boundaries along. So I'm going to select my alignment and I'm going to, to graphically just dynamically move my cursor and you can see how it updates the station ranges. Now what I want to do is I'm just going to lock into the beginning and to the end. So I'm just going to press the lock button here to lock into the start and then press the lock to end to lock to the end. And that's going to lock in my station range for me. And then I'm just going to left click a couple times here to identify the uh, named boundaries. And you can see those named boundaries being created in the uh, plan view here. And I'm just going to left click to accept that. And it's going to go through and place those graphically in our file. Okay, now if I zoom in here a little bit closer, you can see each name boundary is placed every 100 feet along the alignment, 200 feet to the left and 200 feet to the right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to utilize our same tool that we had used previously to extract quantities from the model, uh, the quantities report by name boundary. So we're going to come over to Home, Model Analysis, we're going to go down to Quantities Report by Name Boundary. Now when we used this tool previously, we we didn't specify any name boundaries because we didn't have any. Well, now we do, okay, and we used a name called London Road for our named boundary. So I'm just going to use the down arrow on my keyboard here and select a name boundary group called London Road. All those name boundaries that you see on the screen, they have been grouped together into a specific name called London Road. So that's how it knows um, what to do with these particular name boundaries. So I'm going to come in here and left click to accept that. Display clip graphics, we're not going to use this option, but what this option actually does is it goes inside each one of those name boundary shapes and clips out the graphics um, that would fit inside of that view or inside of that window. And that can be used as a check to uh, check your quantities. So it will copy those graphics directly into the file inside of each one of those name boundaries and you can check the, uh, the quantities within inside of each one of those name boundaries graphically. So I'm just going to say no for this particular case. I'm going to left click to accept. It's going to go through, analyze our name boundaries, analyze our cut and fill volumes, and we're going to end up with a uh, quantities report. And once it's done processing, you'll see the report appear. You'll notice this time in the report, we also have station ranges this time. So we start at 51 plus 00, zero we go to 52. So every 100 feet, it's reporting what's inside of each one of those named boundaries. So you can see there's all the same quantities that we had previously. Also note the named boundary group names are being shown here in the uh, report as well. If you want to take a 
closer look at using a different style sheet, we can come over to volumes.xsl once again and see the uh, detailed breakdown uh, over every station range or every name boundary shape that we've drawn into our file here. So you can see the name boundaries are going to be very useful for slicing and dicing your model or dividing your model up based on station ranges and offsets and whatever you need. So these name boundaries can be created any way you like, okay, anywhere along the alignment. So that's a very good way to uh, break up your project for reporting purposes. Now let's go take a look at creating some additional name boundaries for construction sequencing purposes. Sometimes we need to get quantities just on one side of the road or you know different areas of the project. So the next example that I'm going to do is we're going to create name boundaries on my northbound side of the road and then also on the southbound side of the road so that we can separate those out based on construction phasing or sequencing. So I'm going to close my report here. I'm going to go into a different file. So I have another DGN file set up here specifically for doing phasing or dealing with construction sequencing for named boundaries. So I'm going to open up name boundaries London Road phasing. And again, this is basically just a, a blank file with some references attached to it. We're just going to draw the name boundaries inside of this file. And the first thing we want to do is we're going to create named boundaries along the northbound side of the road. Okay, so we need to go up to drawing production, named boundary, place name boundary. And that's going to bring up the place named boundary civil plan dialog. And we're going to be using the civil plan command or the civil plan tool to create the name boundaries along the northbound side of the road. Okay, so I'm going to select my drawing seed here. And then in the name field, I want to key in NB for northbound. Then down in the lower portion of the dialog, we want to set some settings. We want to specify the length of our name boundary and the offset. Okay, now I want to do 1,100 feet for my length, so I'm going to key in 1100. My left offset, I want to set that for zero because we only want to be on the right side of the road, so we want to set that for zero. And then on the right side, we're going to go 200 feet to the right. Okay, so it's going to create a named boundary 1100 feet long, 200 feet wide from the zero point or from the alignment. Okay, now at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and identify our path elements. So we want to select our alignment and then notice here we can dynamically place the start and end station or the start location and stop location. So I'm just going to dynamically move my cursor to the beginning. And then now notice as I move my cursor, it places the name boundaries with the specified length and offset dynamically along the alignment. Okay, so I'm just going to move this down to it creates about four of these shapes. And then I'm going to data point to accept that. Now at this point, I want to come over into my name field here. I want to change the name. I'm going to call this London Road dash NB for northbound. I'm going to press tab on my keyboard and then I'm going to come back to my view here. I'm going to left click through the uh, prompt there and it's going to create those name boundaries along the alignment. Okay, now I want to use that same procedure to do the southbound name boundary. So I'm going to go up to my name boundary tool again, place name boundary. This time we're going to be doing southbound. So in my name field, I'm just going to key in SB for the name. And then our length is going to be the same. But now for our left offset, we want to be on the left side of the road. Because southbound is on the left, so I'm going to key in negative 200 for the left. Our right offset will be 0. And I'm going to come over here and identify our path element, which is our alignment. And then in our name field here, or actually in my start location, my stop location, we're just going to go to the beginning of the alignment and then drag our cursor along the alignment until we get four shapes or four named boundaries. A data point to accept there. Then I'll come over to my name field here and key in southbound or SB for southbound. Press tab on my keyboard. Then I'm going to left click in the view. Then it's going to create those name boundaries. Now we have name boundaries for northbound and southbound. Now each one of these name boundaries is grouped together. So if we take a look at the name boundary group names, we can come over to our name boundary manager. So you click on this button here, that'll open up the name boundary manager and you'll see each one of those name boundaries are separated into specific groups based on the names that we use. So we had a northbound and a southbound name group. So if we expand those, you can see each name boundary has a very specific name. And if I move this over, you can see that it highlights each one of those in the plan view as you select them. Okay, so this is how it organizes and groups the name boundaries and you can use this name boundary manager to, uh, to uh, manage those. 
So I'm going to close this and then we're going to go through and uh, use the quantities report by name boundary tool once again to extract the quantities from the model. So I'm going to go to the home tab, go to our model and analysis reporting panel. We'll go up to our civil analysis tools and we'll go down to the quantities report by name boundary once again. And we'll select that. Now this time we have some options for the name boundary group. When we created quantities previously we didn't have any name boundaries but now we have some name boundary groups that we can uh, use to extract quantities. So if you'll notice here in the pull down you can see that we have the name boundary for London Road northbound and London Road southbound. So we can uh, specify which uh, quantities we want in our report. So we can go here and select our name boundary group for northbound. And that's going to be all the shapes or name boundaries along the northbound side of the road. And we'll just left click through the prompts and that will generate our report based on those name boundary shapes for the northbound side of our road. Okay, so there's all of our quantities for each name boundary along the northbound side of our road. So we have a station, we have the name boundary name, and then all the quantities listed in our report based on a station range as well as the name boundary name. So you can see there's all of our quantities. Again, if you want to see a little bit more detail, we can go into the volumes.xsl style sheet over here, and you can see it broken down into a little bit better detail. Okay, so let's do that same process for the southbound side. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. We'll go back to the quantities report by name boundary. This time we will select the name boundary group for the southbound side of the road. So we'll select London Road SB and we'll left click through the prompts. And once again, you're going to get the same type of report based on the southbound name boundaries that we've created. Okay, so once the report appears, you'll see you also have the station and the southbound name boundary names listed in the report as well as all the detailed quantities. So you can see using the name boundaries is a very good way to break up your project into specified areas for quantity and reporting purposes. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.